Okay, so you may or may not have heard AT&T had a cyber attack uh, probably a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you have an ATT account, if you use their internet service, their cell service, TV, whatever, all that crap. If you have an account that you signed up for uh, and you gave them all your information, including social security number, that information was compromised and appears on the dark web. So I finally received a letter from them indicating that they sent out emails as well saying, uh, hey, you might want to change your password uh, because we were breached, blah, 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 all that stuff to do CYA. Uh, yeah, it's not just them taking emails and stuff. They got the data. They got your account information, which is scary. It just shows you, man, computer systems are not protectable. They are always vulnerable. In one office I used to work, a uh, commanding officer came in to the, uh, to the brainiacs in the room and said, I want you to take this disc and make it hack-proof, make it protected, make it uh, impervious to uh, hackers and uh, cyber attack. Uh, he came back the next day and the engineer in charge handed him a bag full of pieces of the drive. He shredded it. He said there is no way you can ever protect a computer system from being hacked, cyber attacked, even as simple as, thing as an inside job, someone having your password, or just them sniffing the network uh, with Wireshark or something like that and getting your data packets and getting the information, uh, just hacking in. Mostly it's just stupid people with the accounts. They guess the passwords, they never change the password to a router or something, or their main admin page on WordPress, you know, admin123. It's just so stupid. And then human behavior is being as it is. You can guess the basic password of most people because we're all the same. You know, we all have the same little brain. Uh, some are lazy, and then you can use pretty much math and probability statistics to figure out what someone's password is and get really close, if not nail it. Uh, that's one way. Anyway, so at and sent out a letter. Let's go through it. Um, oh, get your issue of Godlike. This is an independent comic artist, John Malin, J-O-N-M-A-I-L-N, M-A-L-I-N. Go check him out. He has uh, got out of the big companies for um, basic censorship. They were out to get him because, uh, wow, he didn't vote for the right guy. You know, bull crap. He's the better artist than any of those guys. Go check him out. There you go. I'll put a plug in for him. Just got this. It's a great, it's just great to see the art too. If you don't like the story, the art's pretty cool. All right, AT&T, that's me, Cyber, Cyber Jam, Crypto Jam. Um, yay. Uh, let's go through. I'm going to do vertical. That way you can read it too. Uh, at a and t and t we take the security of your data very seriously. Apparently not. We're writing to inform you that at and t has determined uh, that some of your personal information, some, hmm, I guess all, was compromised. Yeah. To help protect your identity, we're offering you one, oh my God, you one year of complimentary credit monitoring, identity theft detection, and resolution services provided by uh, experience identity works. While this service is free, you must follow the enclosed instructions to enroll if you haven't already taken action based on our previous communication. What happened? What happened? It should, it should be what the hell happened and why are these uh, people in cybersecurity still employed? Yeah, on March 26, 2024. Oh my God, we're in May now, so over a month ago. We determined that AT&T, we determined, it wasn't even a, uh, uh, like a like a total affront attack, it was a sneak attack. They just went and took the data and didn't, didn't make an announcement or put up a screen like you've been hacked. They just went and stole the data secretly and then published it. Anyway, on March 26th, they determined AT&T customer information was included in a data set. Dun, dun, dun released on the dark webs on March 17th. Oh my God. So we're over almost a month and a half out 2024. 
Uh, so every intel agency in every country has that information now. Mostly the Chicoms and uh, the spammers, the scammers. The, the, yeah, mostly the scammers from India and Eastern Europe and all those guys. They love that information. They'll just start scamming you out of your money. Uh, it's easier to scam someone than it is to work for a living. All right, what information was involved? Oh, my gosh. The information varied by individual and account. Oh, that's nice. It's all personalized hacking, uh, but may have included full name, email address, mailing address, phone number, social security number, the mark of the beast, the number you need to uh, work in this uh, world, the uh, sign of the beast. That's your sign of the mark of the beast, guys. You need a number to work, trade, barter, eat in this society. People think it's going to be some kind of chip in your forehead or hand. No, that's it right there. Prove me wrong. Date of birth, everything you need. AT&T account uh, number and AT&T passcode. To the best of our knowledge, personal, inf personal financial information and call history were not included based on our investigation to date. How do you know? You guys can't even protect your stupid database and you expect us to believe your investigation uh, has merit? Anyway, no. The date appears to be from June 2019 or earlier. So what? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, they got into an older backup database. That's what it looks like. It appears. See these guys? Look, 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 look. Based on our investigation, boom, based, look at that word appears these guys have no freaking clue what was taken they're just guessing 2019 or earlier that's all they're showing on a dark web so you probably have everything but 2019 or earlier is probably an old data set that's sitting out there in a, a folder that they were able to grab uh yeah uh, sql select star export to file boom easy done that's all they probably did uh what is at and doing to help <laughs> Yeah, yeah, with friends like this, you don't need enemies. Jeez, oh man. I would just stop. You know what? At this point, you guys have got to stop asking for all this information, social numbers, stuff that can be compromised against your clients. That's it. Get rid of that and get rid of um, uh, address stuff. I don't know. You just you just can't have all this information. Know your customer bullcrap. Know your customer and uh, let him get scammed. There you go. That's that's what seems to be the norm here. And the government may be complicit in all this stuff as well. You never know. Uh, we're offering you the complimentary credit monitoring, blah, blah, blah. Um, what's, what you can do is maybe don't use AT&T. Stay vigilant. We recommend you go uh, reviews and close information about currently identity theft protection. And encourage you to remain vigilant. Vigilant by monitoring your personal accounts and credit reports for any suspicious activity. Like AT&T. Using AT&T, I'm very suspicious now using it. Watch out for suspicious calls and emails. We also recommend that you remain alert for unsolicited communications seeking your personal information. You should be cautious about entering uh, your username and password on links provided through emails. You never click on anything in an email you did not request. Even though it's like the company's website. Uh, let's see, the safest route is to go directly to the company's website and log in. That, that is true. Uh, here's my points to you guys, just from experience. Boom. Someone calls you and asks for information. You never give it out. If anything, if they say you're your bank and they can spoof the number easily using, get this, apps in the App Store and Android Store, or Google Store, whatever, and they can spoof a number saying they're from Wells Fargo. It makes you think that these phone companies are in on it too, like uh, Apple and that, these uh, tech companies that they provide apps like that, that you can spoof a number, tricking people into thinking it's actually your bank or something. If they call you, you hang up. Say, oh, I got to poop. All right, hang up, and you call back manually. You punch the numbers into the bank. Do you think who was calling you? And you say, hey, I just got a phone. Was that you? And they'll say, no, it was probably some uh, uh, Rashish from Bangalore calling you to scam you out of your money, which is most likely the case. Yeah, And that's what you do. That's number one. Number two, you never click on anything in a text or email. Never click on You don't know who it is. You know, if anything, cut and paste the link and put it into a text window, a text uh, editor, and look at it. And you'll see it's not really them. It's a spoof. And they're just trying to get your information. But again, grandma doesn't know this. She's going to lose her money. So I'm just putting it out there for people that get it. Uh, people are still going to get scammed. It happens. It happens to the best of us. 
Never do anything in a hurry. If you do get this stuff, oh my God, I better respond. No, there's time. Take your time. You want to confirm. Just don't start clicking on stuff. Do not because you're in a hurry. You want to go to school. You got a meeting to go to. No, just it can wait. Anything financially related, do not do in a hurry. That's from personal advice. I screwed up once just by rushing. Uh, do not ever do that. Take your time. You got time. Come on. There's there's always time to finish stuff. Uh, suspicious email calls. Yeah. Anything on calls I get or text. What I do on, I know if you do this on other phones. Oh my God, I'm 10 minutes into this damn thing. Uh, what you do is you block that number. Um, yeah, be careful with that. I noticed after this breach, I started to get numbers from my non-area code. Um, how do I say this? My non-area code phone to which my phone is registered. You know, the area code, my phone, my phone number has an area code. <clears throat> I'm getting phone numbers from another area. So it's like, eh, okay, it's out there. So I don't even answer it's just the way of the world now. Before you couldn't wait to pick up the phone years and years ago. Oh, who's calling? Now it's like, oh my God, who's calling? Uh, and I just block it. I go into information. I say block this number uh, just to limit it out. Or you respond to a text say, hey, this is a DOJ number. Why are you contacting us? And then you'll never hear from them again because they're criminals. And they go, oh my God, oh, they're onto us. So you can do that crap as well, right? <laughs> just to freak them out. But then block, 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 block. Um, that's pretty much it on that. And watch out for people even coming to your door. If they say they're like with a federal office, wink, wink, uh, you call the local sheriff. I don't care if they show you a badge, the feds badge, FBI badge is fake anyway. There's this big rectangle thing and they're just uh, dressed in street clothes. You can't trust that they're who they are. I would call the local sheriff, say there's a, some kind of imposter out front flashing a badge and a gun and it doesn't look legit and they'll come by and the local sheriffs love to tase these people and hopefully they are fed so they do get tased that'd be funny <laughs> and there's some youtube videos of that these idiots being tased just trying to intimidate people uh going going above and beyond their power of their authority authority uh yeah do not talk to people coming to your door either they're, they're, you never saw a fish catch a man type of thing. Only if you instigated or initiated the contact is uh, when you should have a conversation with these people. So there you go. Oh, the also, here's the pro tip. Go to the three credit reporting agencies. I don't know why there's three. It's so stupid. Uh, TransUnion, Experian, Equifax, I think are the three. Go to those three. I have a video on this. You want to go in. It's not going to take long under if you to figure it out. It's going to be under a half hour, you know, to do this for each three. You want to freeze your credit accounts. You want to freeze everything so nobody can go in and do a uh, oh, a request on your credit, like trying to get a loan, trying to get a credit card, trying to get a phone. They're going to try to do a hard credit hit on some of these things. Most credit card apps, loan apps, all this stuff are hard hits which will appear on your credit history. So by freezing your account, they can't do it. Um, and then it'll be reported that someone tried to do it as well. And you know, oh my God, they got my stuff. Uh, it's for real, guys. It's a shitty time to be alive. It's a shitty world. Everyone's out to get you, take your money from you, and make you broke. Uh, not only the government, but just scammers and schemers. It's everywhere. So I don't know what to say. You do have to, I mean, you signed up to these people these uh, AT&T people, any company, and you give them money to provide a service. These people did not provide, they provided the service, but are not trustworthy in that they allowed the data breach to occur. I don't get it. It's almost like you married this person and now they're, oh, they're back there selling all your money, giving all your money, or screwing around on you. Oh, I'm just going to stay vigilant with them. No, you kick them out. You get out of here. Hey, hit the road. Pound sand. <laughs> I don't know, man. Stay vigilant. At what point do you say enough is enough? I don't get it. I just think these companies need to stop requesting all the personal information. Just say, hey, you want a freaking phone service? Just pay us. Boom. I don't care. Oh, but we got to know who you are. Know your customer. <laughs> oh, shut up. Just take my money and provide the service I pay you for. When I go to a restaurant, I pay cash with, for the meal. Do, I, do, do they ask me everything about me and my social? No. They provided a service. I paid them. Done. Uh, I don't know. So oversimplification, but that's the point. All right. Let me know if you guys got some of this crap. Uh, there is a new compliance thing out there where these damn companies have to report cyber attacks now. So uh, be, be aware of this, man. It's for real. I don't know what to say. 
uh, have multiple bank accounts, spread your money out just in case you do get compromised by AT&T or someone leaking your data by accident. Uh, even a government was breached. There is a um, Office of Program Management years ago, not that far, within 10 years, 2014 or something, the crazy woman that ran it, uh, they had a huge data breach. And all that, you can imagine what's in the, uh, all the employee records of the federal employees and contractors. Guess, and some of that is doing some, you know, private stuff. And that gets leaked. And then she just gets, I think they asked her to leave or she got promoted. It's some crazy lefty woman running that place. Uh, you go look it up and she's on the steps of the building. Uh, we're trying to identify the damage. No, all the foreign enemies have this information from the OPM breach as public information. It's just holy crap. You just can't trust anything anymore. So anyway, yeah, you're salmon swimming upstream and uh, good luck to the to those that make it. <laughs> I'm out. Goodbye.